this is Cat's Diamond Painting. Welcome to my channel or welcome back if you joined me here before. So today I wanted to do a slightly different kind of video. I am a little bit of a diamond painting accessory nerd. <laughs> I'm really fascinated with trying out new accessories to go with my diamond painting to complement what I get in the toolkits that I get with the paintings that I buy and that's partly because I'm a bit of a collector I just like to have pretty things but it's also to do with comfort and convenience you know I want to find the trays that work best for me the pens that are most comfortable in my hands that kind of thing I like to buy from small businesses if I can I do also buy accessories from some of the larger diamond painting companies and Amazon places like that not going to pretend I don't but where I can, it's really nice to get on places like Etsy and see what small businesses are out there. So I thought today that what I would do is showcase and then kind of review some of the accessories that I've bought specifically from UK based sellers. I'm doing that because as someone who lives in the UK, um, I pay a lot of money in shipping costs getting items that are from international based stores. Um, and usually those have been really worthwhile, don't get me wrong, no regrets. Um, but if I can get things from a UK based shop, then that's so much the better. I have checked though, and all but one of the items that I'm going to show you today do offer worldwide shipping. The last item that I'm going to show you is a tray, um, which it doesn't mention on the Etsy shop. So if you're interested in it, you could always contact them and see what they'll do. All the others do say they offer worldwide shipping. I couldn't comment on prices because I can't see that. I can only see the, the UK based shipping, um, but those options are on there. So before I get started, I do want to say because I'm going to review these items a little bit today, please do bear in mind that A, these are all things I've bought with my own money. So if, if it's something I'm raving about, that is my genuine opinion. But also, these are my opinions, just to reiterate that. So some items will work really well for me and not at all for you and vice versa. So if there's an item that I love and you try it and you don't love it, I'm really sorry. <laughs> and if there's an item that I don't love so much, but you think it will work for you, please don't be put off by what I've said, because nothing that I'm going to show you here today is, is you know, rubbish. Nothing, <laughs> nothing is not worth trying if you think it looks good for you. Actually thought I'd bring the camera in closer to you. <laughs> so without further ado, this is probably one of the very first accessories that I ever bought for diamond painting. So this is a pen, as you can see, from Jay's Hand Turned Gifts. So that is the name of the Etsy store. I will link for all of these stores below in the description. So this is an acrylic pen, or so it says on their Etsy store, and it was reasonably cheap. I mean, well, not cheap, but for a hand tin pen, it's not too bad. I paid £21.50 and got free delivery. Um, I did buy this quite early on in my diamond painting journey, probably about a year ago now. So if that cost is out of date, can only apologise. So this pen... I wasn't asked at the time to pick a, a shape, or at least if I was, I didn't notice. I just chose one and this is what came. But it turns out this is basically perfect for my hand. And it is still one year on, having bought lots of other pens, one of my favourite pens to use just because I find it so comfortable. I'm small, I have quite small hands, um, not particularly delicate. <laughs> But they are small and a lot of chunky pens just don't do it for me. Um, I know that some people really like a chunky pen because it's just more comfortable for them. Um, it isn't for me. So this is really good if you like kind of mini, uh, not mini pens, but mini compared to many. Let me grab another couple of pens that might give you a reference. So I have here a pen from Diamond Art Club. A lot of people might have tried these and a pen from C'est Plus Beau Zetor, um, which again, I know a lot of people try. So just to put those all together, you can probably just about see that the Jay's Hunting Gifts pen is slightly smaller, not hugely so, it's not actually a mini pen, it just comes up a bit smaller and it is a little bit slimmer. 
particularly compared to this one. So this would be a medium style uh, pen from Super Beaux Arts. They have chunkier ones than these. But for me, this is about as chunky as I'll go. And this sort of thing feels more comfortable. So I would definitely recommend this if you're like me and you like a more petite pen. Looking on their shop yesterday in preparation for doing this video, I would say they're a little bit limited in terms of the range of blanks that they offer. Um, there's not a huge variety to choose from and they are slightly more, what's the word I'm looking for? Kind of standard ones, you know, they're, they're the blanks that you'll see all over the place. They're not handmade blanks that give you that really individual feel. But if there's ones that you like on there and you like a petite pen, I would definitely recommend this. It's not my prettiest pen. I would say it, it, the particular blanks that they've used, maybe it didn't come out as good as it could have done, but I love it. I use this one all the time. Practicality overlooks, that's me. <laughs> so that's Jay's Hampton Gifts. The next thing that I wanted to try a couple of months ago was some different forms of wax. So I tend to use diamond painting, uh, diamond painting, diamond art club wax quite a lot of the time because it's good. It's a really good quality pink wax. And I have loads of it because every kit of theirs that I buy, I get two of those plates of heart shaped wax. And one of those plates will last me several paintings. So I've got probably a lifetime supply of it already. <laughs> but I wanted to try some new options, see if there were things that could work even better. So I found scented beeswax from Dark Diamond Painting. So it came in this little tin and in here I've got a good chunk of heart shaped wax and I went for cherry flavour. Now, obviously <laughs> you can't smell it. I would say it's, so they say on their shop that it's a subtle scent, a subtle fragrance suitable for people who are particularly sensitive to strong smells. And I'd agree with that. I mean, there is a good smell when, when you when you sniff right in the packet. But for instance, I have a block of paddy wax amongst my waxes and that's wrapped up in um, packaging like this, but has still made the whole bag smell of that smell, which I like, but if that's not your bag, these are a lot more subtle. They had lots of different fruit flavors. Um, so I got this one just because I particularly like cherry. Um, I would say I didn't have the most amazing experience buying this just because when I ordered it, it didn't turn up. <laughs> it's kind of fundamental, isn't it, to buying things. Um, the lady who owns the shop was very communicative, though. She was apologetic, explained she'd had some personal issues and, and some things had gone awry with when things had been posted and she'd lost track a little bit. Um, she resent um, the item or sent it for the first time, having forgotten before. I'm not sure exactly which. And she did give me a bonus cover minder as an apology, which is, you know, that's great customer service, isn't it? And I really love <laughs> this cover minder, actually. I use it a lot because things go wrong. You know, we're, hu we're all human. I don't expect any company that I deal with to be perfect. But good customer service is saying, hey, something didn't go great. Let me make it right for you. So I have no complaints there. It was also very reasonable in cost. Um, so it was four pounds for this plate, which it's small, but having started to use it, this is going to last forever. <laughs> and it was one pound 80 postage. They do offer worldwide shipping. And I would imagine that this is going to be one of the cheaper items to get shipped worldwide just because it's so small. Um, so worth trying if you like um, the different kind of wax, um, harder waxes. They said it was particularly good for multi-placing. So that's where I've tried it. I started using it yesterday. I've got it loaded up in this pen here. Um, so it feels really firm in there. And it's been good. It says on their shop you need to get used to it and I am still getting used to it. I've been using it for a day. It feels like there's plenty of use left in this wax before I'm going to have to reload it. Loading it was a little tricky. They said on the shop that there's videos on YouTube explaining how to load up um, 
a beeswax style plate. I couldn't find any, but I have seen YouTube videos with people loading up things like paddy wax. So I took that kind of approach and scraped it in. So as you can see, there's a few scrape marks on there. This is how I know this is going to last forever because that was a full loading of the pen and it's just scraped a little bit off the surface. So that was fine. Um, so using it so far, I don't know how much of this is just me not being used to this kind of wax and how much is a reflection of this particular one. So if you have experience, hopefully you will be able to decipher the difference. It's lasting well. It's leaving a tiny bit of residue on my drills, but nothing that I can't quickly brush off. And, you know, most waxes leave a bit of residue, don't they? So I wouldn't say it's it's comparing too badly there. Um, Every so often I get to a point where <laughs> I've got my drills in the tray and it's simultaneously hard to pick them up from the tray. <laughs> and then when I put them down on the diamond painting, um, they're not coming off. <laughs> and what I found is if I, at that point, just rub my thumb over, to kind of refresh it that really helps also when it was totally brand new in the pen I did have to scuff it against my clothes a bit just to take the edge off the stickiness because the drills just weren't coming off so I'm figuring out ways to use it maybe I should have waited to do this review until I'd, I'd used it for a bit longer because I can't tell you how long it will last in the pen at the moment I can tell you it still looks as well loaded as when I put it in there so if I can keep just refreshing it like that it's going to last a long time, I would say. To me, it feels pretty similar to paddy wax, which I've tried, but don't have a huge amount of experience with. So sorry if I'm wrong there. Paddy wax is hard to get a hold of because they sell out really quickly. Also, shipping's very expensive to the UK and Europe. So this could be a good alternative if you want to try that kind of thing. It's a good thing you can't see me because I just stopped to have a drink of water and I managed to chuck it all down my front so I'm very wet. <laughs> so we're now going to get on to one of my more successful purchases in the sense that this is something I use a lot. So I ordered, again fairly early on in my diamond painting journey, trays from a company called Hatfield Designs 3D. So I have got four of their trays. This is another UK based Etsy company. They're pretty reasonably priced. The small ones cost £5.99, the large ones are £9.99. I have two different designs here, which I'll go into in a moment. They've got lots of different colour options and the lady who runs the shop is a diamond painter herself. You can really see that she's got experience of what works and that's gone into these trays. They are not my absolute favourite trays. I have ones that I like just a tiny bit better, but those are ones that I've paid quite a lot in shipping to get from the US. To save a lot of money, I could have just bought these. And to be honest, I would have been fine because I do still use these a lot. What I have found in my very specific personal experience is that other trays I have, I prefer a little bit for square paintings. And then I really like these for rounds. So I tend to come back to these whenever I'm doing a round painting. So the, the three on the left are their earlier design where the lid is just a lid that comes off like this. They also have a stopper. And this spout is really good because it's a really deep spout. You can really tip your drills into there and then shake them in if you need to um they're not it's not that easy for them to bounce out the trays have a decent depth to them again drills aren't tripping out drills aren't tipping out of those too easily and i will show you some drills in them in a moment so these three all have the lids that way this is one of their newer designs i think they call it 2.0 and basically the tray is now a slidey lid thing. It's a nice touch. It doesn't make a huge difference to me personally, because I don't actually use the lids that often. Um, but it's a nice touch and I like a company that's trying to improve their product and get it to be the best it can be. So I'm going to 
sure you have some drills line up in them. So first of all, I've got some squares. The cat's just started snoring. So if you can hear that in the background, I apologize. <laughs> okay. So as you can see, these line up pretty nicely. Even though there are other trays I tend to use for squares, I would be perfectly happy just using these as well. And as you can see, I can put that spout right in the pot and give it a good shake around. They are sticking a little bit. I think that's largely just because the tray needs a clean because I've been using this for my current painting. When I did receive these, some of them had slight imperfections in the ridges, so there would be bits where drills stuck. I've sanded those down slightly, so that helps. Um, but also, I think it's just something that you get sometimes with 3D printed items that they need to kind of wear a little bit to, to run smoother. Let's try some rounds. There you go. Those are some rounds all lined up nicely. So as you can see, these are really nice trays, very reasonably priced. They are, oh, that was my bad, not the trays. <laughs> um, they have shifted to only selling what's in stock, um, I noticed recently. Um, so they, rather than placing an order and then waiting for them to make it up, which used to take a couple of weeks, they will now dispatch really quickly because they're only selling what they've actually got ready to send. So I think when I ordered this tray, which was my most recent one, I think I had it in about three or four days after I'd placed the order. So that was really good. So the next item I have to show you is a quick one. It's a little cover minder. This is from Forever Sparkles One on Etsy. I believe it's handmade. I couldn't actually get any information on the website, but it's it's quite unique, isn't it? <laughs> it doesn't look like one where someone's just bought things on AliExpress and stuck magnets on the back. Um, so it's resin, it's got flowers on the inside and it's quite big. Just to show you the one that I got as a freebie earlier, this is a fairly sort of standard size cover minder that would be comparable to say the ones you get in Diamond Art Club kits. So you can see this is quite big in comparison. It's got good strong magnets, very strong in fact. <laughs> and I really enjoy this, I use it a lot. It was only £2.50 and then I think £1.55 postage. So pretty reasonable, particularly if you bought a couple of items um, rather than paying that postage just for one item, if you know what I mean. I like it a lot. The next item I have to show you is another pen. So this is a pen I bought a couple of months ago and it's from Crafted Makes on Etsy. I really, really like this. So a couple of things about this shop, they sell truly unique pens because they make their own blacks. So they're resin and then wood and things like pine cones, that kind of stuff. So you go on their shop and they'll have a picture of each sort of design, but they've made say five blanks for that particular colorway. Um, and each of those will be slightly different. So you choose the one that you want out of what's available. And then once they're sold out, they're gone. I chose this one. So you buy the blank and then you put through a separate order for a pen. It's just the way that they, they process it. You need to put through both in order to get the pen made. And you choose the shape. So I chose this one. I like just a sort of fairly standard, nothing fancy about it shape. But they did have a decent range. So if you prefer a different shape pen, they're probably going to be able to accommodate you. It was, I think, about £23 and a few pounds postage. So it came out maybe about £27 in total. A little bit more than some. Um, but I don't think that's unreasonable at all for an absolutely handmade pen. You know, handmade blank, 
hand turned really nice shiny finish i think that's pretty reasonable i put this on the end so this didn't come with it um i think it came with some standard plastic ones but that's fine i get these cheap on aliexpress the thing that i really like about them is that i've been in touch with them to ask if they could do things to my specifications and they're really responsive so just going back to showing you my earlier one and I was explaining how this is a really comfortable fit for my hand. You can see that the Crafted Makes one that I bought is a bit chunkier and longer. So there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. That's just not my personal preference. So I got in touch to ask if I wanted to have one made a bit thinner and shorter, would that be possible? And the person who replied was saying, absolutely whatever you want just let us know i was having this conversation i think about half 11 at night as well on a saturday and they were still replying really quickly i'm sure they don't respond that quickly all the time but it was like wow this is really good customer service so i definitely definitely plan when they next have um a blank that i really love to get one made up aiming to get it a bit closer to this sort of size and then that will probably end up being one of my favorite pens i imagine got one more thing to show you today and everything that I've shown you so far I would really recommend for different reasons this one is the only one that I'm a little bit more on the fence about so this tray is from print eastward first things first it's it's cheap it was a really reasonable cost option this is the large one it cost me seven pounds and had my name on it I also got a small one for £4. I don't have that one anymore because I sold it on on a, D, on a D stash site because I just wasn't using it. And delivery was free in the UK. It's not, for me, the best design. The big caveat is it doesn't work so well for me in my particular workspace. It may work brilliantly for you because a huge plus point is this massive spout. So once you tip your drills up into that spout, they're not going anywhere. You're not going to spill them. There is a stopper, which is good and closely fitting. The things I'm not so keen on it. Firstly, it's a bit wobbly. <laughs> so I feel like it's a bit easy to catch. You can see it spins round because it's not entirely even on the bottom. The other thing is... So much of the design is taken up with the spout, which makes it a little top heavy if you're trying to hold it and makes me a bit worried that I'm going to drop it. But considering this is their large tray, there's not actually a lot of space left for drills. I'm going to demonstrate it anyway. The sides are also really shallow. I don't know if you can see that clearly. So... It lines up these squares reasonably well, but you can see there's not a lot of space. I've not put a huge amount of drills in there. This kind of gets in the way if you would want to have them lined up any higher than this. They do pour out very nicely. Oh, hmm. that was my bad. I thought they were done, but possibly a little flaw in the design that you just can't see <laughs> that you've still got drills in there okay I'll show you with some rounds as well the squares lined up pretty well the rounds I would say not quite as much there might be other rounds that work really well in it because rounds do vary in size a bit across different companies too bad mm. I've got better I've got better ones so that's that let's see if I can tip them out this time without and the other thing is I found the rounds really stick in there I think they may be just slightly big for the ridges maybe this tray was really designed with square drills in mind because to be fair it really lined up the square drills nicely didn't it oh. i'm making it look worse than it is i was using this tray yesterday 
and I've obviously used it in the past as well so that I could do this review and I was not getting as stuck as I am now this is because I'm doing it slightly awkwardly with the camera in my way but it wasn't the smoothest I used it for a bit and then I did move back to another tray because I was finding it frustrating I feel kind of bad putting this on here um I don't want to be giving a not so positive review really but obviously I want to be honest and I feel like it's important to talk about what works for me not working right for everyone and maybe this would be the perfect tray for you but I think probably the people who made this they've got a really good starting point for what could be a really good drill tray they just need to tweak the design a little bit more you know like bring these sides up make them deeper make the spout a little bit shorter you know if the spout was starting here you'd still have a really good space to tip the drills into and not tip them out of the play but then you'd the tray but you'd have a lot of extra space in the tray and also possibly the the round drills could have lined up a bit better so there you go those are all of the items that i have to show you today I plan to do a whip and chat later this week and I think what I'm going to do is use these so that you can see them all in action a bit more. I really hope that you've enjoyed looking at what I've got here. I think it's such an enjoyable part of the hobby, isn't it? Collecting all the accessories as well. I'll often go on Etsy and just search for things and see, oh, there's a new company popped up. So do give any of these a try if they look good to you, including the ones that didn't work as well for me. Um, I think that they all got merit, some of them more than others. And nothing that I showed here, I think was excessively expensive either. Obviously things will cost more if you're international and you have to pay more in shipping, um, but these are all worth a go. So if you've enjoyed this video, please do drop a like on it and please consider subscribing to the channel. Um, it's still a fairly new channel. I've been really enjoying growing it over the past few weeks and months. Um, and I hope that you'll decide to join me along the journey. Thank you for watching with me today. Bye.